again everybody, I'm Scott Meese and welcome to the Southern's Pigskin Picks for week three alongside uh, Les Winkler, Pete Spittler. Um, first of all, let's just talk about what happened in week two. Um, Les, your thoughts, obviously some big games. Uh, Harrisburg gets a big win, uh, another big win for, for Carmi over Johnson City and just a, a real, uh, they, they beat him up pretty good. The uh, Harrisburg uh, Ducoin game was a very competitive ball game. Uh, I thought Harrisburg dominated the middle part of the game, and, and Ducoin really, I thought, outplayed them the last part of the game. Harrisburg just got two big defensive plays and got a turnover when they needed it, which turned that game around. And uh, hey, I guess Carmine's for real. Uh, you know, uh, El Dorado played him a tight game that first week, but uh, they caught my attention this week with the way they kind of manhandled Johnson City. So, uh, you know, Carmine's a team to be reckoned with, uh, I suppose. And then, uh, what do you think, Carmi? Forty-two to eight, uh, surprising to say the least. I so I'll be honest. You know, no matter how much I think Carmi might be down, could be down, how many kids they have, how many kids they don't have, Kurt Simon always impresses me. I mean, he is able to get those kids, just capture the heart and souls of his players. So. Uh, I mean, maybe I need to start picking them because obviously I'm not doing very very well in the picks this last couple of weeks. Chase Saylor's a real player, their sophomore quarterback. Uh, he's a very talented kid, and uh, like I said, when when he was out of the game at El Dorado, that's when El Dorado closed the gap, and um, you know, they're, they're legit. And then uh, I got to see Heron beat up Carbondale pretty good. Heron's looking really good so far. Um, they've got the quarterback Davis, who's a tremendous talent, but. Um, Let's move on to this week's games. We've got uh, Marion at Harrisburg. Uh, the Wildcats are one and one. They come off a win this past week, and then Harrisburg two and zero. They've two thirds of the way through their big three to open the season. Uh, who, you, who do you think will win this one, Les? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Marion's just because I think Marion's do, and Harrisburg coming off two and zero, there might be a slight letdown. I really don't think that's going to happen, but. Um, you know, for Harrisburg to come out 3-0 and that first three would just be incredible. They've already won two of them. So I'm just kind of going with the law of averages type thing, which I know doesn't exist. But uh, that's my excuse. I'm picking Marion. Pete, who do you think? I will get the opportunity to um, counter Les's <laughs> argument here. Uh, talking with uh, Coach Jason Roper this week, obviously at this point you don't want to say too much uh, about, your, about the upcoming game. But I know he's excited and all the players are excited. Last time... They beat uh, Mount Carmel in the coin, um, went 2 and all was 2000, you know, which was obviously a special year, state championship year. Um, you know what, I have a gut feeling on Harrisburg, gut feeling, women's intuition, whatever you want to call it, but I think Harrisburg can can pull this out, and I think, uh, I think it could be a pretty exciting night over there. I think it could be a close game. Um, Marion, I think, might be down a little bit this year. They don't have as big, nearly as big of an offensive line, which is maybe why things have been a little bit closer with them. But with you know Shaquille Ivy, the other Ivy, plus Cedric Neal, I think Marion's going to have too much speed for Harrisburg. I think Marion pulls this one out. Uh, moving along to the Black Diamond, um, the Carmi White County Bulldogs, 2-0 and going down to Chester, 1-1. One and one. Chester gets a... A much needed win at Sasser uh, last week, and um, Carmi just continues to surprise everybody. I mean, you always figure they're going to be, you know, halfway decent, but that performance against Johnson City, the blowout was really, really big. But they got to go down to win a tough game at Chester. Who do you have in this one? Uh, two weeks ago, I wouldn't have even had to think twice about that. I would have just said Chester, you um, know, in, in a walk. But uh, now I'm going to say Carmi in a squeaker. Um, you're right that uh, the way they manhandle Johnson City just makes you sit up and say, "Hey, you know, you, you have to take notice." And Chester's one and one. You know, why can't Carmi continue? I, you know, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense because I said Harrisburg couldn't in three weeks in a row. But I, I, I guess I'll go with uh, Pete's gut gut feeling. I'm going to go with Carmi. Uh, Pete, uh, just your thoughts on this game? Obviously, it's another big game. The Black Diamond could be even closer this year than it has been in years past. Absolutely. I mean, you've got uh, Carmi and Fairfield. The two teams are in the driver's seat at 2 0. Everybody, for the most part, is 1 and 1. Um, but at the same point, you no, know, Chester fans kind of breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief after uh, last week's win over Sesser. But the thing that gets me is that Chester's at home. They don't have to get on the bus for that two and a half, three hour bus ride. And that's, I, I mean, how big of a factor is that? I think it will be a factor. And then I think this is a Chester team that's kind of. And it played some spunk and fire last week and, and seemed to get pointed in the right direction. So 
I gotta go with home team on this one. I picked Chester. I picked against Carmi both weeks, and both weeks they've won. I'll <laughs> pick against them for the third time, and uh, I think Chester will be too much. Um, I just I don't see Carmi going down there and beating them. I think uh, Chester had some injuries against Vienna. That's that was a Chester was leading, I believe, at the start of the fourth quarter of that first game. I think uh, you know Ch that was just a bad game for Chester, and I don't see Carmi going down there and beating them. I'll go with Chester. Uh, moving along to uh, another big game, uh, Heron 2-0 at DuCoin 1-1. Uh, it's a lot of hoopla, the new Van Meter field less uh, with the turf, and then, you know, the same old Jason Carnes, the former standout for DuCoin up against Al Martin in his last few years here. Uh, these games have been, Heron, I think, has won several of them over the last few years. They've been very competitive. Who do you have in this one? I'm going to go with DuCoin. By the way, I, I just have, I was in DuCoin cover or something at the State Fair the other day, and I drove by Van Meter. It's It, it looks sharp. It's a really nice-looking facility. It always was a good facility. The field was just a little bit suspect, but it looks great. But um, coming off of uh, the Harrisburg game last week, I, I think DuCoin is going to rebound. Um, they're, I, I really like a lot of things about this team. That offensively, they can do a lot of things, and they can do a lot of things well. Uh, Brandon Williams uh, is just an absolute monster when he gets his hands on the football. Uh, Gossett obviously throws the ball very well. Uh, haven't seen Heron yet, so I'm kind of just kind of grasping in the dark here. But uh, I look for DuCoin to rebound. Pete, what do you think about this one? Uh, Scott, I'm like you. I picked against Heron the first two weeks of the season, got burned for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Heron this time. I got a chance to see him week one against Bethalto. I like their power running game. I think they got some tremendous athletes. Uh, and sometimes when you have a really nice facility and you get kind of caught up in the atmosphere about it a little bit, it comes almost kind of like homecoming. You know, you got so many nice things to look forward to and such a great atmosphere. So I think Heron can steal this one. Uh, since seeing Heron last Friday night, I was 99% positive I was going to pick Heron all week, and I'm going to change to Ducoin. <laughs> uh, just something tells me that there's no way Ducoin can lose this one at home uh, with the field opening up. That being said, though, Heron is awfully tough. I mean, I would not be one bit surprised if Heron wins it. I'm going to go with DuCoin in a toss-up only because they're at home. Uh, final game, Pinckneyville at Benton. When was the last time this was a big deal? Both teams are 2-0. and They're both pretty good. Um, Panthers haven't played stiff competition yet. Benton does have a really nice win over Carterville in Week 1, 34-16. Uh, Les, what do you think about this game? Well, all four of these games are just – Kind of like coin tosses. I mean, you could. I, I mean, you can make a you can make a case for anybody winning any of these games this week. I mean, it's it's just incredible. And you're right for the Pinckneyville Benton game to be pitting two undefeated teams, even only in week three, is was just unthinkable just a couple years ago. Um, basically, I'm going to go with Benton simply because of what you said. They do they do have one nice win over uh, over Carterville, and uh, Pinckneyville's still kind of in that category where you know, show me again. And maybe maybe I'll believe. You know, I might be all all wrong going with Benton, and you know, with my apologies to people up there in Panther territory. Uh, you know, if you win this one, I'll, I'll I'll probably have to pick you next week. But that's next week. <laughs> Pete, Pete, Newville, Benton. Obviously, uh, nice for these two programs to be moving in the right direction. Who do you think comes out on top? Um, you know, obviously, you know, like like you said, you know, both of them are undefeated. Both of them have a lot of excitement. Finally, for first time on Pinkneyville's side for a number of years and uh, but at the same point you know it's hard for me to uh, pick against Benton I just you know even looking at this matchup right now on that sheet of paper it's hard for me not to kind of look at Pinkneyville I just want to focus on Benton I mean I think it'll be a good game I think it'll be a game fans will enjoy and look forward to but uh, I have a feeling this is Benton's year. Uh, I'm gonna go with Benton too I wouldn't be surprised to see him pull away in this not a blowout but a couple of touchdown victory um Benton can throw the ball well. They can run the ball. Their defense is pretty good. Pinckneyville, um, the shoot kid at quarterback is a tremendous athlete, which gives them an advantage whenever whenever he rolls out. You know, if he wants to take off or throw it, they've got some pretty good receivers. But you know, people are pretty hyped up in Benton right now because they think this is their year to make the playoffs, and they've really got to this year. I mean, this is it. You know, so um, Benton, I think, way too tough at home. Um, Leffler is a pretty good quarterback. He's got a lot of weapons around him and I, I don't see Pinckneyville you know going in there and winning this one all right folks uh, join us back here next week for uh, week number four of the picks and uh, we'll see you then.